put my bucket on here already so I can do the tear on it. So I can start out at zero. So we're going to start off with 29 ounces of organic coconut oil. And because it's a lot cooler now, this time of year, the coconut oil is pretty hard. So I'm going to have to get it in here, get it weighed out, and then um, I'll heat it up a little bit in the in a hot bath so that it'll be easier to work with. Ta-da! 29 ounces. And now I'm going to re-tear this to zero and add 51 ounces of canola oil. And there we have our 51 ounces of canola oil. So because the uh, coconut oil is pretty solid in there. It's not going to melt. The room temperature in here isn't really warm enough. And I have my windows open and I'm enjoying all the fresh air. So I'm making a hot hot water bath in the sink. I'll fill it up just a little ways with some hot water and then I'll set a bucket in here and it'll melt it. So I want the water on the outside of the bucket about as high as the oil is on the inside of the bucket. And you'll notice I stopped just a little shy of that by about maybe an inch. And that's because I'm going to boil some water in my tea kettle and pour that into the sink as well. So that it gives it that little extra boost that it needs. So now what I need is 30.4 ounces of distilled water. Make sure that it's, let's see if you can see that, distilled water. It's probably upside down, but whatever. So I'm gonna re-tear my scale here. And I'm gonna pour in 30.40 ounces. That was perfect. I'm getting good at this. Okay, so I did the tear again and I'm going to do the lye. The lye crystals here. And I want 11.45 ounces. Uh, there is our 11.45 ounces of the lye crystals. So while I'm waiting for my water to boil to melt the coconut oil, I'm going to start prepping my forms that I use. And these are just little organizers that I found at the dollar store. I do find that they work better if you line them with parchment paper. Uh, you can get them out fairly easily if you don't use the parchment paper, but it just, for me, it seems even easier if you use the parchment paper. So I just line them with the paper to make it a little easier. Okay, so I have those set up and my water is boiling. So I'm just going to bring that over here and just pour it right into the sink around the bucket. You can see it's already just sitting in the regular tap water has done quite a bit for it, but this is just going to help bump it along a little faster. Mostly just because I'm impatient. <laughs> and now that I have the uh, oil
oil melting, I'm going to go ahead and take my distilled water and my lye mixture, or my lye crystals, and make the lye solution. I'm using a stainless steel spoon. I used to use wooden spoons, and you always want to pour the crystals into the water, not the other way around. Um, but I used to use a wooden spoon, but it would really like chew up the wooden spoon, and a couple batches of soap later I'd have like a splintery spoon, and it would splinter off into the soap, which, you know, that's not a very pleasant experience to wash off with splintery soap, so I use the stainless steel now. Just making sure I get all the little pieces of it there. And I will stir this up, and it's going to get really, really hot and really, really fumey. So I'm going to put it underneath my stove top fan. Now I'm going to continue to stir this to make sure all of the lye crystals are well dissolved. I have just a regular cooking thermometer here. Let's see how hot this is right now. You can see the steam kind of coming off of it and going up into the fan. Let's see how hot is it right now. You can see that's climbing pretty fast. And I've said this in my other videos, you really should be, oh, it's fogging up the, fogging up the thermometer there. You really should wear gloves for this and have vinegar on hand in case you do get a spill on your skin or something else just to neutralize it. See, right now I'm about, about at 180 degrees. It's starting to go down because I just pulled it out, but we're going to let this sit for a little while and uh, start to cool down. I turned off the fan for just a minute so that you can actually hear me talking. But you can see how it's, it's getting quite a bit clearer than it was when I started. It's still really hot. But I'm going to want this to get down to about 100 degrees. And I may need to give it an ice bath to help it get there. But uh, right now I've still got the oil in the, and this is just water I put into my empty oil thing just so I have some place to put that. But you can see that the coconut oil has still got a ways to go. So I'll just let this cool off and the oil warm up and then uh, when they are both around 100 degrees I'll keep going forward. It's getting there. Usually you want it within 20 degrees of each other, so around 100 degrees, but it looks like we're right at right at about 100. This is perfect. Well, I think I figured out how to give this uh, lie an ice bath without my ice cubes. I was thinking about maybe putting one of these blocks directly into the lie, but these bottles have been through all kinds of stuff and I do put them in with food so I decided I didn't want to just stick them in there because um, I don't want to contaminate the lye and I don't want to um, I just don't want to have any issues so I decided to put some cold water in this large stainless steel bowl and then put the ice blocks in that water so that should help cool this down a little faster because I'm getting really impatient <laughs> I'm just not much for waiting so let's see where we're at now. Oh, that dropped it quite a bit because it was at about 130 when I set this up. So we're just below 120. So it should just be a couple more minutes. Okay, I think we're just about there. We're just, well, it's still climbing a little bit. Let's make sure it settles down. I think it's at about 110. Yep, it's about 110, which is perfect for um, adding to the oil now because the oil is right at 100. So 
Really you don't want more than a 20 degree difference between the two liquids, but that's perfect at 10 degrees difference. And they're both right around 100, so here we go. So here's where the fun really begins. Both are within 10 degrees of each other, around 100 degrees, and I'm going to pour the lye water into the oils. And you can see it's already starting to react. It's not quite as clear. It's going to get kind of a creamy yellow color as I continue to stir. And you don't need to have any kind of electric mixers or anything for this. You can do it just with a spoon. It takes a little longer. Uh, the saponification process takes quite a while. It uh, is a process that actually can take a little over a month for the total process to take place. But what we're looking for at this point is for the, the oil and lye to emulsify and kind of become a creamy texture. We're looking for what's called trace, which is where when you lift up whatever it is, whether it's a spoon or a mixer, and, and kind of drizzle through it, you'll be able to see the, uh, the trace of where, where you dribbled it. And um, I think I'm actually going to break out my, my little stick mixer here and make this go a little bit faster. see how much faster that made this process. And it's still going to take a little while. It still isn't even close to trace yet. So I'll keep doing this off and on until I get closer to what I'm looking for. And then I'll, uh, I'll be using these other little mixing cups to mix up the colors that I'm going to be using. I'm actually going to be working with some red wine mica and some Midas Touch Gold. I won't add the uh, essential oils or any fragrance oils or any of that kind of stuff until I get closer to trace. The thing is, depending on what oils you're using for your smelly good stuff, it can either kill the trace or make it go to trace faster. I already know how this one responds, but the first couple times you use any given smell, uh, you're going to want to kind of be careful to see how it's going to respond. Uh, different, different types of oils will have a different reaction. Okay, we're at what would be a really, really light trace. You can just barely see. It's almost like a surface residue rather than an actual trace of where where I've dripped this. So this is where I'm going to put my fragrance in. So for this part, I'm going to use my scale. I'm going to turn it on, and it's okay that I have my mixer in there because I just want to measure out the smelly good stuff. And I'm going to do about three ounces, if I can get it open. There we go. There we go. And you can see it's already starting to have a chemical reaction there. Oh, that smells so good. Let me get my scale out from under here so I can be solid. Okay, so while I'm at this level, I just wanted to get the the smelly good stuff all incorporated into there because I'm going to pour some of this out into these other containers to add my color because I don't want all of it one color. 
that's pretty well incorporated, so now I'm going to first have a little place to put my mixer down so I don't make a big mess. And I'm just going to pour some of this about a cup's worth into that one and about a cup's worth into this one. this really cute little mixer that I'm going to use here to add in. I'm going to make this one the uh, red wine mica. So I'm just going to take about, yeah, would, would be about a tablespoon. I'm going to drop that right in there. And I want to do the same with my Midas Touch, which is kind of a gold, and we'll put that into this one here. Kind of wipe my spoon off so I don't get too much of that other color in there. And again, about, about a tablespoon worth. And then I'll just use my little... Incorporated. Probably need to change the batteries on this. That's such a pretty color. up the gold as well. Alright, so I think that our two add-ins are about ready. So let's see where this is at. Got a very light trace. And I only use this stick blender for soap making. It is stainless steel uh, so that it doesn't get eaten up by the lye, but I don't uh, I don't use things that I've used for soap making for food anymore. So once it's once it's been determined that it's gonna be used for soap, that's all it ever gets used for again. Oh, I wish I had smell -a vision This is so wonderful smelling. This is uh, cinnamon, orange, and clove. So here's a really good example of what I mean by trace. You can see it's kind of thick. And when I dribble it, you can see where I've dropped it. It's no longer just blending into itself. It actually leaves a little trace of where it's been. And that's what you want. This is a light trace. If you have a, a heavy trace, it'll actually leave like a, a, a layer on top of the, uh, the mix that'll be almost uh, like a pancake mix, I guess you could say. Okay, let's see if you can see the trace in this one that doesn't have the color in it. You can see it's kind of thick. Oh, there you go. See the lines that it's leaving on top? That's what I mean by trace. So this is ready to pour. 
So let's see if I can do this without making a big mess. And I want to leave enough room at the top for these colors that I mixed up. And I have a spatula that I have marked as soap. This is only for soap. So let's see if I can get my other little containers here. going to work with the, the gold mica. I'm just going to kind of drizzle this in and it will make little pretty patterns in the soap because it pours at this point where it's still a really light trace. It'll actually pour down into the soap. but not all the way. This is one of my other soaps, and you can see how when I poured it in from the top, it just kind of dribbled down into the main soap base and made the pretty little designs. And you can you can always go in with a toothpick or something and kind of poke it down in there a little more if you like. Let's see if I can scoot these over a little so you can see what I'm doing. Oops. Some people like to do this uh, when it's a little bit more of a, a heavy trace because it makes kind of a, a sculpted look on top of the, the bar, but I personally like it when it's a little smoother on top, so that's why I do it the way I do it. But that's the beauty of this, is you can do it the way you like to do it to create the kind of look that you like. And same goes for the kinds of smells that you add. It's really up to you what your final product is. So I'll just keep doing this. And then uh, these will have to set up for so I won't be popping them out of these uh, um, forms until sometime tomorrow. Okay, so now I've got them in a, just a cardboard box that I had. Um, I'm going to put another piece of cardboard over the top of this and then I'll put a towel over the top of that until tomorrow and that will help kind of heat, keep the heat in until it sets up and gets ready for cutting. The soap is ready to cut. 29 hours, but it is absolutely perfect. Uh, the top actually looks the way that it should look. Sometimes it can get kind of frosty looking because um, it gets a little too much air to it, but uh, this time I actually covered it really good, so it looks much better. So what I'm going to use, this is actually a miter box, real cheap. Uh, I actually have another one that I bought at a thrift store for a dollar. This actually comes with a saw and it's, I think, 10 bucks or whatever. But it's really perfect for doing what I do because it's got these nice little channels that I can put the, uh, the blade in and measure it out so that it's, you know, the bars of soap are pretty close to the same size. So I'm going to get started here. Okay, so let's see if my paper actually helps to 
to get this to come out. Ta-da! Here it comes! Ta-da! Oh, it's a thing of beauty! Oh, and it smells so good! Yeah, I really am a fan of the parchment paper. Look at that beautiful bar of soap. Oh my goodness. Just gorgeous. Kind of in my own light. The other day when I was making the soap, it was daylight, so I had wind, or sun coming in the window, but we're just going to make do with what we have today. So, now the other nice thing about this little miter box is that it does have these little measurements here on the side. So I can decide how big I want to cut the soap. And I like just about an inch wide soap. I think actually what I'm going to do is cut this end off because the way that this box is shaped that I use as my mold, it, it does tend to um, kind of wedge it in at an angle. So let's see if I can line this up and cut off some of that. Plus I like having these little pieces because I get to use them for my own soap pieces. Oh, I love the way that smells. It smells so good. And I'm just going to line this up. And cut. And these perfect, beautiful, and see where I was dribbling the uh, the colors into it, it made these wonderful little intrusions into the main soap. And they're glittery and just beautiful. And I'm actually using a cardboard box here that I'm going to set these in. I'll show you those here in a little bit. But for now, I'm just going to continue cutting. One loaf all cut up and I've got the second loaf out here and I'm going to get ready to cut it. And there it is. All the bars cut up. My little extra pieces right in here and I'm just using a little cardboard box to, uh, to set them in and I will cover them again and let them cure. I won't know just how good this soap is for about four weeks. I recommend four to six weeks to let it cure completely. You will notice that they will decrease in weight slightly because as the water evaporates out of them, they, uh, they do lighten up a little bit. But these are absolutely gorgeous. They smell fantastic. And I can't wait to see how they're going to look and feel when they lather up in about six weeks. Just in time for the holidays, I'll probably be putting some kind of notification on my Facebook page at the very least of when these will be available for sale and I usually sell them for about five bucks a bar you can get them uh, pretty much anywhere in town uh, handmade soaps run anywhere from four to ten dollars a bar depending I try to split the difference on that and at least make back what I put into them so orange clove, and cinnamon soap. Don't forget to like and subscribe.